Hello, I'm Laurie McMenemy. Welcome to The Ugly Inside. Subscribe below. The venue here is the Potter's Heron Hotel. <coughs> yes. We can't leave without asking you. Yeah. Uh, this was the site of where Laurie signed the, the then European Footballer of the Year, Kevin Keegan. Kevin Keegan, yeah. How did you pull that rabbit out of the hat? Oh, well, I've told the story many a time. It's a long one, but uh, we, at that time, um, they'd been living down here a while, and we were moving house. Uh -huh. And the fella that was doing the house, it, it suggested that we had a light thing up on the wall, on the stairs wall. And I said, well, what's the problem? He said, well, if you like it, and he showed me pictures, he said, the trouble is we can only get it abroad, it's in Germany, and, uh, so wherever it's in Hamburg. But I'd been reading recently, in those days, where Kevin Keegan, who was playing for Hamburg, had been there for a while, was ready to move. Uh -huh. But he was linked with Real Madrid, Barcelona, all these clubs. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, give me the brochure. I then rang Peter Robinson, who was the secretary, um, very respected, well-known man at Liverpool. Had a bit of chat with him, how are you doing, Peter? And um, just generalising, I said, oh, I said, um, I see uh, Keegan might move. Will you come back to you, do you think? And he said, no, no, he won't be coming back here. I said, oh, OK. I went, great. Because, you see, often when, in those days, they would have a close in. If they let him go, they would have first shout. Right. So I cleared right. that one out of the way. Um, I then had to find out a contact number for him. And I'd never met him, but it's a family. I mean, you know mm. about each other without knowing. And, of course, he had certain connections because he was at Scunthorpe, yeah. where I was yeah. at Grimsby and, and those areas. And um, I found a number for him and I rang up, said who I was. Oh, yeah, yeah, how you doing? And all that. And I said, look, couldn't do me a favour, could you? And I mentioned the light. I said, if you're coming back with England, if you could get it and bring it and I'll meet you. And So we left it like that. And I, I did that for one or two mm -hmm discussions with him and um, and then eventually I said so, so you might be moving like you know and uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes he said I think it's time to move on and um, it's funny that you see because nobody would have dreamt a European player of the year twice why would he want to leave but that was part of Europe mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that's followed it on now yeah if you look yeah. coaches are coming players are coming yeah they're yeah. used to moving around yeah whereas it's English normal. managers and players we just wanted another contract yeah Anyway, yeah. he was into that, and I said, um, Real Madrid, Barcelona, and he went, yeah, they've been. I said, you've got a baby, haven't you? And uh, I said, got to be careful, you know, going to these places. I said, you need uh, probably people guarding you, you know, and all that. You don't want trouble, and, mm. and I put the phone down, you see. And I kept bringing daft things like that up. Then eventually I said, why don't you think about coming back to England? And, and I said, you know, we've got a good club, and... I said, you know, people like Bowley and McShannon yeah. and that. Yeah. And anyway, we agreed. He was bringing the light and I was going to meet him. England had a game. <clears throat> and um, I said, um, we'll meet you. I'd, I, had to, I had to find somewhere to meet him. Anyway, sure. I spoke to Guy Askham, who was the... I hadn't told anybody. I hadn't told mm -hmm. the board, the chairman. But Guy Askham was the financial director. Mm -hmm. He was my neighbour. He looked after my situations and that. And... Um, he couldn't believe it. I said, look, I'm, I'm just you and me. And, and he knew a fella that had a house in Kensington and he he mm -hmm. let um, he let us use his room. And I told him, when the door goes, I'll answer it. So he didn't even know. Mm. And anyway, he came in and we sat and we had the chat and uh, I told him what a good club and this, that, and the other. And then after a while, he said, have you got a contract? And then he fell off the chair. I said, gotcha. <laughs> and I never thought of it. And Guy asked him, typical accountant, he opened his case and he had a, and he signed a blank contract. I said, I can't believe that. He said, Well, I've got to tell you something. What I said, I forgot you're late. <laughs> I said, The hell with the light, pal. I said, Here we go. And um, that was it. That's how it happened. And then yeah. we kept it quiet. Well, I told the rest of the board then. But we kept it quiet for I don't know how long. And then it was arranged for him to come over and we make the announcement. And I rang a couple of press. But one in particular I knew, get the press here on a Monday mm -hmm. in Potter's Heron. In those days, everybody played Saturday. Yeah. They were usually off on a Monday. And you got them all to come in. I booked a room in there, far end there. And um, they didn't want to come. I said to me, man, Alan Montgomery was, who joined me in writing the book. 
which I'm sure you mm. read. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, a retired journalist, but he was a number one then on the sun. I said, Alec, I'm not telling you what it's about. Get your mates there. They'll regret it if they're not there. Yeah. And yeah. they turned up here, and um, I said, uh, Kevin, what about your agent, Harry Swales, mm. with a big moustache? Right. Remember? Okay. Looked after Ryan Giggs mm. later on. Um, he said, It's your day. You tell him if you want. I rang Harry and I said, I need a favour. I said, Sit down first, because he knew nothing about it. Didn't Nobody know, knew anything, did they? Know, he, yeah. he was his agent. Yeah. He wasn't telling anybody. He was his agent in England. Yeah. I said, Do us a favour, Harry, will you be at Southampton Airport? I gave him the time. They were flying in on a private plane. Mm. Bring him down here. Everybody was in there. I then told the chairman. Yeah. On the day, there was the chairman guy asked him, and I told the two senior, I gave the players in one day off, mm. told Bawley and, and um, Mick Channon, the seniors, I said, come along on the day. They didn't know what it was about. Mick typically went to the races. <laughs> um, Bawley came, and if you look at pictures, Alan's looking a bit... Uh, yeah, what have I been brought here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he told me afterwards, he thought he was on This Is Your Life. <laughs> Alan did. Anyway, tap on the door at a given time, door opened, lady walked in with a baby, and the staff at the press are looking and Kevin Keegan followed her and they stood up and there was a big gasp went up and yeah. they all applauded yeah. and yeah. I went that's it and that was it and then yeah. after that it went, it went right around yeah. to the world you know well, it's nice to get one up on Liverpool, isn't it? Because uh, <laughs> they've uh, they've tried to sign our tea, tea lady of recent, so uh, oh, right. yeah. So that's <laughs> yeah. that's fantastic. But Liverhampton, Laurie McManamy, you've you've been a star. Oh, many yeah, many yeah, thanks yeah, for your yeah. time. Pleasure. And, uh, it's nice. I hope uh, the, you, the viewers, have enjoyed this. If if you've liked it, don't forget to subscribe to the Ugly Inside and leave your comments below. Thank you, Laurie. Uh, not just for this interview, yeah. but for the 12 years or so that you gave as a manager, how much yeah. success you brought us, and not forgetting his work in local charity in the area, and, and the very best for the well, future. Well, it's a great area, and the supporters are brilliant, and yep. one of the best in the, in the country as far as I'm concerned, and I hope they have a great day out of Wembley. Okay, thank you, Laurie McMenemy. Pleasure. Cheers. Thanks very much.